I remember walking into one of my university classrooms at a very early day in September at the very beginning of my junior year. I had just one of my chains on and a fitted cap slightly tilted to the back. My drawings were fresh and the belt holding up my pants was somewhere around the middle of my Tommy boxers. <laughs> I hadn't yet turned off the music that you could hear blasting through the headphones around my neck. A milli, a milli, a milli, I'm a young money millionaire, tougher than Nigerian hair. <laughs> Lil Wayne was popping that year. <laughs> of course, I strolled in late as usual. I was merely repeating my regimen, the patterns of my tried and tested high school routine that I had developed and used to project and assert my identity. By repeating these behaviors, I felt I created a sense of self and also a sense of space within a classroom. But a strange thing happened that day in university. In fact, it had been happening for a little while, pretty much since I began walking into university classrooms as a freshman. See, I would come to class late on a routine basis, hat on, still playing my music, and passively looking around for attention. Yeah, yeah, I'm here, it's me. Get it? The guy who doesn't care about school? Now, look at me make my entrance and please, please tell me what I'm doing wrong. I dared them. In fact, I thrived off of that type of interaction. And these were the subconscious thoughts trickling through my 19-year-old psyche as I twisted that doorknob and smugly walked to an open seat in the class. But there was a difference I was experiencing between my high school days and now university. The difference was that every time I now performed my presence, no one seemed to care. There were no looks of comical relief or supplanted appreciation from my peers or even hostile attention from the professor. It felt as though the collective consciousness of the university room was whispering, keep your damn hat on and wear your pants however you want, whoever your name is. We barely notice and hardly care. In high school, this performance would yield a completely opposite experience. See, back then, finding my place within that school setting meant navigating it by indicating my need to belong to an urban black collective. Or to say it more simply, embodying the hip hop culture that I cherished. The challenge is that the culture most urban black males ascribe to, hip hop culture, is viewed as the opposite of implicit school culture. Hip-hop culture is viewed as the opposite of implicit school culture. You see, it's not necessarily the history textbooks that aren't reflective of our faces or the English assignments that silence particular ways in which we make meaning, but rather how schooling doubles down on media discourses about urban black males and hip-hop and the subsequent mechanisms that then foster our alienation from school. In turn, many black males react to this subjugation by passively rejecting the school as a whole. Look, my high school had a no headgear policy. So naturally, I wore my hat all the damn time. <laughs> I knew that this small instance of disrupting the school culture would garner attention and elicit that black male validation I was desperately trying to claim. We had four periods a day, and I would come late to every single one of them. Why? because I knew that my teacher would say something to me that I'd be able to either rudely retort or nonchalantly brush off and once again assert my identity. Internally, I was resisting a culture that was implicitly devaluing me. Shoot, even when I did answer a question in class, attributing my participation to my boys to the fact that I actually studied the content was the last thing I wanted to do as a high school kid. See, these small instances of getting attention for acting out were merely the validation I needed to be seen as young, cool, and black. But even these subtle moments led me to feel slightly uncomfortable in that space. You see, the constant friction between attaining academic excellence and black male validation reveals an internal friction that implicitly suggests that once one does excel in academics, it almost unfortunately feels like he's abandoning part of his hip-hop culture. I call this the Fresh Prince Syndrome. Remember Will Smith on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Okay, 
<laughs> he was the class clown, the star of the basketball team, the confident, suave, talking flirt, and he was always fly. Instead of wearing his blazer like every other guy, he turned his inside out to showcase his urban aesthetic style. Will represented that quintessential young urban black male. And we could come up with a dozen more character traits about Will and the Fresh Prince. But not one of them would embody what we idealize as the universal student. The Fresh Prince syndrome is a benevolent ailment that plagues urban black males. But wait for the kicker. It's caused by traditional schooling. You see, hegemonic schooling practices are set up in a way that's meant to deceive and ultimately fail black boys in the long run. School insidiously teaches urban black males to be less urban. The things that hip hop culture emphasize, things like bravado and identity and being heard are squashed out in our classrooms. We're told that our modes of communication are illegitimate. We're reminded that the way we dress won't be accepted once we get into the real world. Ultimately, the school alienates urban black males, creating a fractured authenticity. And the black male, subconsciously, is internalizing this. But listen, there is a cure to this Fresh Prince syndrome. If we consider the university space in relation to the high school one, we may be able to come up with a few of those remedies. You see, in university, the performances that I enacted from high school were met completely differently. In fact, the performance that I had learned to enact when I did it in university, it was met with indifference. And you know what happened because of this? I stopped using the school as a site to explicitly perform my black hood masculinity. It didn't change how I dressed or how I talked, but it changed how I navigated that school space. Because the university is so lax in everything outside of the actual academics, I was able to truly be myself and focus on said academics. So, if we took the best of what the university site provides outside of the academics, and took the best of what the high school space provides for growing intellectual teenagers, we may arrive at a space that retains and engages more urban black boys than it pushes out. And we can start with a few simple things. High schools must become more lax with their explicit rules pertaining to implicit curriculum. For example, hats and particular dress codes, constant surveillance and subtle monitoring, <laughs> immediately addressing lateness in front of an entire class, autonomous teaching practices, and stereotypical perceptions are all things that must go by the wayside if we truly want to foster young black geniuses and create spaces in which the performance of black masculinity is not taken up by these kids solely as a reaction to hegemonic resistance. Look, I'm a teacher, and as teachers, I know that we must make sure our students are able to produce well-structured essays and understand the concepts of science and answer questions in geometry and in algebra. But perhaps more important than those things, we must be able to personally connect with each and every one of our students in a way that validates everyone. I like to call our best and brightest teachers culture blenders, where student agency, academic excellence, and validation, independent of superficial performances, are the most pressing cultures that they push to establish. And when it comes to our black boys, when we really begin to consider the complicated politics of representation by understanding the ways in which black males refuse, by whatever means, to allow others to other them, we'll be able to present a space in a schooling in which black masculinity is defined more so by a both-end dichotomy that considers the complexity of all identity. This Fresh Prince syndrome has been an undiagnosed disease in our schools for decades. If we make a few of these changes, perhaps we can finally eradicate it. Thank you. <laughs>